Now here I have a little power supply, a little homemade one. Actually says it's out of Electronics Australia, July 1979, 5 to 15 volt output. Old price tag there, that can go. And it's got a couple of regulators, very rusty looking. Is that a 7905? Or 7908 I think that is. No, 7805. It's got two different numbers on it. So it's a UA7805, which is a voltage regulator, and this one, no idea. Don't think I'm gonna read much on that, just rust. And I already tried getting the screws out of this. But they're all rusty, so you can't even get a screwdriver in. I tried the old trick of getting a pair of side cutters, and if you can bite into the sides of the head, you can sometimes get them to undo, but these, basically most of it's just flaking off. So there's not really much metal there to, to even grip. But I don't think we're gonna even grip those very well. So this is really rusty. I'm hoping that this, the insides aren't too bad, but this thing may be very corroded, but I think I'm actually gonna have to get a grinder or something to just grind those off. But if nothing else, I do need a couple of these heat sinks, or at least one for a project, and that costs nearly as much as what I paid for this, so I thought I might as well recycle that. And if that voltmeter is any good, it's probably just a one milliamp meter. That'll be handy. And yeah, the rest of us not the best. Plenty of corrosion on the front. Switches still move. Mm, that doesn't. That does. It does actually turn a bit. So the mounting post ain't the best. And hopefully there's a decent transformer in it, if nothing else. So I'll go and cut that off and see if I can get the lid off and see how bad it is inside. Okay, I've just ground all the heads off this thing. Oh, it's actually quite good inside, thankfully. That's actually got an old Ferguson transformer, one of these sort of low profile ones, much built like a fluorescent light ballast. These were quite common in Australia once. 15 0, 15 volts. So if nothing else, that'd be perfect for running one of those little pre-amplifier boards I got. Because given the condition of the rest of this, it may not be worth doing much with. But I'll see if I can find the circuit for it, I guess. So it's got a bridge rectifier made on a couple of tag strips. A couple of old axial electro caps, owner ones. And we've got a rating here somewhere. 4700 mic, 35 volt. Some of these old blue toggle switches. So it's probably in working order, to be honest. And some little op amp or pair of little eight pin chips on the board there. So it's probably safe to plug in and try it out. Out and in, so they're both voltage regulators of some sort, but it's weird it's got a five volt. As I say, it went from 5 volts up to 15 volts. So you've got a 7805. I would have thought you'd have an LM317 or something, but they're normally in one that goes up to 30 volts. Let's plug it in and see what it does, if anything. Well, we don't get anything lighting up, but that's because I've got the vent on. There we go. Got a red LED, a very old one by the look of it. And nothing on the voltmeter, but then it could be reading current or something. Oh, here we go. Oh, it might be an output on off switch or something. No, we still don't have any adjustment. Oh, here we go. A very bad pot, I suspect. But it's at least going 5 to 10, maybe. But it's possible this has got a current limiting thing or something. So probably I'll have to look at the the project, I think. So we've got 12 volts. Goes about as high as 19 odd volts. Even flicking up to 20 there, but so I don't think this meter's working the best, could be the problem. Oh geez, it's then jumped up. So this pot's very bad, I think. Give it a squirt of contact cleaner, I guess, and see if it makes it any better. It 
doesn't go down to 5 volts. So I wonder if one of these switches to just a fixed 5 volt output or something. That seems to be output on and off because the meter goes out. Oh, now the meter's gone right up to above 15 volts. Well, that's not varying the voltage, is it? So maybe it is a current limit or something, don't know. Or maybe it's just to switch the meter into current mode. So I can measure either the current draw or the voltage. And now we're getting down to 5 odd volts. So I've improved that. And the top is you know, more like 18 volts than it feels like it. But the meter's not reading, it goes from 5 volts up to 10 volts. Even though there's 20 volts there, so whether the meter's faulty or something that feeds it. So if they use both windings here, it looks like two of them are joined there and the browns. Oh, what have they done? They've got the browns going to either side of the bridge rectifier, I think. That's 15 and 15. I don't know, why don't have they... Yeah, it is a... I think it's a bridge rectifier. And they've got two capacitors. Oh, yeah, and that goes to the tap of the two... The O-volt and O-volt. Go to the other side of the capacitors. there. Put 20 volts across that one. And that should be mere yeah, minus 20 volts. So over the bridge rectifier we should have like 40 volts or something, which we do. We do have a, a third terminal, don't we? I said maybe this is plus or minus or something. Got 20 volts. Oh yeah, we do. So that's uh, about 19 volts positive of that terminal, and that's 19 volts negative of that terminal. So it's a dual rail by the look of it. That makes more sense. So one of those regulators is a positive, one's a negative, I'm guessing. Well, it must be, because that's on the negative side of that cap. And that's going to, like, the input. Which is the collector thing would be a collector on a transistor, negative 20 and negative 7 coming out of it. Oh, that's not in then. Oh, these, some of these were hooked up differently, weren't they? 20 volts on that pin, 7 volts out. So hang on, we should have plus or minus 7 volts here. Oh yeah, we do now. Yeah, so that's a little dual tracking supply, so that's why it's got two chips in there, I guess. One for negative, one for positive. Built on a bit of Vero board. I wonder if the original was just on Vero board, quite possibly. Yes, yeah, so the outputs of those come over here. And these other yellow wires would be the... Well, if they're adjustable... They must be adjusting the ground side of the regulator, I guess, is what you could do with these fixed voltage. But 7805, I didn't think you could get them to regulate up that high. So this will be an interesting little one to see if they're just using a plus or minus 5 volt regulator and basically turning them into an LM317 type thing. That could be quite interesting to see. And this meter goes across here, the positive terminal to the centre terminal, the ground one. And that meter's actually just straight across. So this is a proper voltmeter by the look of it, and it doesn't work very well. So we've probably got a bit of corrosion inside that thing. 
which would not be surprising given the condition of the outside of this thing. It looks all right in there, not corroded that I can see or anything bad. Oh, it's working now. Five volts, well, yeah, up to about 18, which is correct. Oh, now, ooh. <laughs> is that the pot is dicky or is that the meter's dicky? Oh, so maybe it's freed itself up. Does that have to be in a particular position, possibly, so you can zero it? That seems to be working now. This was one of these switches was a bit dicky or something, which is quite possible given the condition they're in. I see now we don't have. Oh yes, that switch maybe. Ah, is that some sort of meter switch or something? What does it do? Oh, it goes to the potentiometer. It's part of what it does, and it goes to another part of the potentiometer, so it's switching across there somewhere. And that other switch, yeah, it switches the outputs on and off by the look of it. It's in series, yeah, with the orange wire to that one from out of the power supply. And the blue wire, which goes to the negative terminal, so that's what that switch does. So that switch could be got rid of if you don't want to load switch, but this other one not sure what that does, but it's it's pretty dicky by the look of it. So I've printed out the circuit for this thing and the whole article basically. And yeah, it's just a couple of little 741 op amps. And they are just fixed 5 volt regulators, one negative, one positive. And they're basically designed to rather than the earth pin going straight to earth which gives it that then it sets the output voltage to as some sort of reference to that ground pin and if that's at ground then you'll, you'll get your 5 volts out but if you lift that voltage there up it'll still be a certain reference certain amount above that ground pin so I guess 5 volts difference there so if you lift that up to 5 volts on the ground pin then you'll get 10 volts out and that sort of thing sort of a well known thing with but fixed voltage regulators that you could basically even put a few of these diodes in or something on the ground pin if you want another volt or two out of it you just added a couple of uh, diodes in series there on the ground pin and that had lifted up another 1.2 volts at the ground which would make the output another 1.2 volts over what it's meant to be so if it's a 5 volt regulator you'd turn, basically turn it into a 6 volt regulator but later on they made like the 78, uh, 7806s, 7808s, all those sort of things so you get a lot of different voltages. I think 7809 was another one you could get. But in the old days here, back in, this is back in 1979, you'd only really get like 5 volt, 12 volt, and I think they did 24 volt as well. Or was it 18 volt? I can't remember now, but there was only a couple of different standard regulators. And they're using these op amps, which are basically tied together to this pot. And you're going into the inverting input and non-inverting input on the other one, which Basically, so they track each other and looks like they're actually hooked in after the, the regulators. So they're getting their supply voltage for those chips actually on the variable output, which is interesting. But I don't think that probably matters too much as long as it doesn't fall outside their operating range. You'd think you'd actually have the op amps hooked up to the input of the regulators. Very, I think it's pretty rare to see in a power supply where your actual regulated chip is on the output side often they're driving a transistor instead of a, a regulator like that so it's an interesting little circuit anyway just pretty basic well, i don't think there's much else exciting in here it did, it did come out with a circuit board originally and whoever these people are just decided to make it on varro board probably to save a few dollars or a bit of time making your own you couldn't always get these 
locally though it's possible Dick Smith or someone would have sold this as a kit locally and yeah they're actually talking about what are these chips LM3 320k5 and LM340k5 I think that is should be in the parts list somewhere I guess and I haven't seen an LM340 for a long long time they're always just normally 7805s and 7905s and these ones in the TA3 cases were I think rated about 2 or 3 amps this power supply is rated to put out 1.5 amps I believe where did I see it? Oh, it's just back here somewhere yeah 5 volt to plus and mi plus or minus 5 volt to plus or minus 15 current's up to 1.5 amps I think that transformer is rated at 2 oh, it does say 2 amp max there and it's got excellent regulation outputs are protected against short circuit and thermal overloads I think they're basically saying it was mainly designed to run if you want to play around with op amp circuits and stuff which use yeah dual uh, power rails and you want them ideally tracked to each other so they're exactly the same and the only thing this this other switch that someone's added here just seems to switch it from variable well I'm not going to full voltage there we go so the 5 to well, it's a bit more than 15, 5 to 18 volts or whatever and you put it in this other mode and it just seems to go straight to 17 volts and stays there because they've actually wired this little bunch of resistors here four resistors on a little tag strip across the potentiometer and that switch just switches them in, in and out of circuit well it does when it works oh yeah we're up high so it looked like it was set to the same thing so it basically kind of goes to full voltage I guess roughly and I guess that's if you wanted to switch off the ability to do variable voltage. The original one had this load on off toggle switch and of course power switch. And at least the meter seems to be working again on this. I don't know if it's really much use, much point in keeping the thing, but I've got a couple of heat sinks which I might need one of those later. And it was going to cost me near 10 or $15, I think, just for one of them, which is more what I paid for this thing. And do have a good transformer I could potentially use to run one of those little preamps which uses plus and minus 15. And a few other bits and pieces. At least that voltmeter isn't just a 1 milliamp. It's kind of handy that it's a, a DC voltmeter. You could actually use that in other things just to monitor the output of a power supply. I tend to use a few fixed 12 volt supplies for lighting and stuff. So it's always handy to have a meter on there just to see if you're overloading it to the point it's dropping a bit or anything. But this really wants a really good clean up. Probably all these switches replacing with something a bit nicer. Horrible old knob on it. I hate those old, looks like it's something from the 1950s or something. But you could still even buy them in the 80s. But I personally would put something a bit nicer looking than that one. I really wasn't a fan of those ones. And what else we really got? We've just got a, what's this, another? just realised it's got another earth terminal there, which I guess is the mains earth. Because this other one's isolated, I think, from the... It would be isolated from the chassis type of thing. Where's the actual circuit gone? I think it's pretty normal to leave them isolated. Yeah, I don't know why someone's added an extra earth terminal that isn't on the original. I wouldn't have thought it would be. So yeah, a little bit different and for some reason they've got a joiner in the house together because these transformers came with these to turn it off I guess they came with these wires a couple of fly leads with the crimp connectors on them and I think same for the outputs so someone's just joined that where it goes to the main switch it wasn't long enough to reach it the neutral side goes into the power cord and I guess I should check if they are actually 741 op amps whoops I think I nearly cracked it it is oh, what on earth is it Oh yeah, 741. The National Semiconductor. LM741. Yeah, I might have cracked it on that screw a little bit. But anyway, thanks for watching.